Hi everyone, we're going to look at an endgame called the Lucena position. And the Lucena position is a rook and pawn versus rook endgame, where the pawn is on the seventh rank, one square from promotion, and the supporting king is on the promotion square. So white can win this position, but it's trickier than it looks. So the idea is to get the white king off of the promotion square to make room for the pawn to promote. But right now the black rook has these squares covered and the black king has these squares covered. So we need to get an escape square. Now we'll never be able to budge the rook off of the B file if it wants to stay there. So our best chance is to check the black king and make it move over. Now there are four legal moves here. Let's consider each one. If the king goes to d6, then that's the easiest case. That's the worst defense. White simply moves his king to d8 and gets ready to promote, and black doesn't even have any safe checks. Maybe you're thinking the black rook can come over here and threaten a back rank mate, but it doesn't work. We just promote anyway, and if he checks, we're ready to block. Okay, so king to uh, d6 in this position doesn't work. So what if the king moves to the f file? Well, if it moves to f7 or f8, our strategy will be the same. If it moves to f6, we need a different strategy. Let's say it moves to f7. Okay, so we now just gained two escape squares for the king, but it's still not that easy. We can't simply run out now and get ready to promote. And the reason that doesn't work is because black is going to have an endless series of checks. And the only way to hide from the checks is back behind the pawn again. For example, if we don't go back to the promotion square, we have to come up to c6. Black would check us again. Now we can't come up too far because we don't want to lose the pawn. We have to stay in contact with the pawn. Black rook would check again. Maybe we come over here and try to approach the black rook. For example, if the black rook goes over here, we're getting closer and closer to it. Seems like a pretty good strategy, right? Well, no, that doesn't work because if we do come to a5 here, the black rook just returns to the c file and guards the promotion square and threatens the pawn. So white would have to defend the pawn by going back. So there's no way to escape these checks. So what do we do then in this case if we can't run out with the king? Well, we make a very clever maneuver with our rook. We lift the rook to the fourth rank. Now the purpose of that is we're next going to run out with the king like before, but this time we're going to get the king to the c5 square, and then when the black rook checks us, we'll be ready to block with our rook and then we can promote. So this rook is going to provide our king with shelter. All right, so you may wonder, does it have to be the fourth rank? Well, the fourth rank is best. For example, if we try to do it on the fifth rank, there are complications because the king could attack us, and the third rank doesn't work because we'll never be able to get the king all the way up to this square in order to block the check because the pawn will fall before we can get there. So that's why we do the fourth rank instead. And uh, this is going to build us a shelter on the c4 square. All right, notice the black king is cut off here from the action and we have these escape squares. I suppose the rook can go over to the d file, but if it does, we escape on the b file. Doesn't really matter. Let's say the rook moves to b2. Well, then we come out with the king and we threaten to promote so black has no choice, he has to check us. Then we come up, and again, he has no choice, he has to check. Then we move over. You can go to b6 or d6, it doesn't matter. And here, actually, black has two ideas. He can check again, or he can just stay put on the c file, maybe move to c1, because he is defending the promotion square. Let's look at each. If he checks us again, then we play our king up to c5, and um, if he checks us again, we've got our rook ready to build that shelter. By the way, putting the rook on c4 has another name. It's traditionally called building a bridge. 
I'm not sure why. I don't get the metaphor. I'd rather call it a shelter. But that terminology bridge is very common, and it's due to Aaron Nimzowich. Okay, so what if in this position Black doesn't check us and he just stays in contact with the C file guarding the promotion square? Well, in that case, we bring the shelter up toward the king. We bring it to the fifth rank. We didn't do that originally because the Black King might attack us. But here, if the Black King attacks us, we're okay. We're ready to come over to this square anyway, and then our King can hide on C6 and we'll be able to promote the pawn. There's nothing you can do to stop us. And if he checks us, then we can go over, and if he checks again, we can put our shelter in place. Okay, so that's the idea when this black king goes to f7, and it would be the same if it went to f8. So what about f6? Well, this time putting the, the rook on the, the fourth rank to build the shelter on c4 doesn't uh, work out so well because black can attack us. He's come forward to attack us. Well, that's okay. We modify our plan, and instead we bring a rook up to the eighth rank since the king has abandoned uh, the eighth rank there. And the point of that is now we'll be able to get the king out and the rook will be protecting the promotion square. And there's nothing black can do about it. For example, if he just marks time on the B file, we can come out. If he checks us, we come forward. If he checks us again, we move aside. If he checks us again, we don't need the shelter we had before because now we can approach the rook. The rook can't go to the C file, we'll just promote. The rook is there to defend. So we'll be able to approach this rook and eventually it will run out of checks. Okay, another idea is once we move the rook here to F8, the king can actually return to F7 and attack the rook. Well, that's okay, we just bring it down to the fourth rank again and we've transposed to our original lines where we built the shelter on C4. So we've covered every possibility in this Lucena position, white wins, and it doesn't matter if the pawn is any pawn from the B file through the G file. Rook pawns are a different story though. Have a look at this position, it's white to move. Well, the black Rook has the B file covered, and there's never going to be any escape for our king. There's nothing we can do to win. This is completely drawn. There's no escaping from in front of the pawn. Um, you may think maybe we can check this king and drive it away somewhere, and then put the rook on the B7 square to get shelter to move the king over. Well, we can't. The, the king will always be able to, to stay over on this side of the board. If we check it away here, we can't get to this square. We, we have no access to that square. We'd have to come and try from the side, but then the king can just go back. And if we check it from the side, it will just toggle back and forth between c8 and c7. So there's absolutely nothing to be done. However, take a look at this related position where it's white to move. This time, the black rook has not yet seized the B file. Well, white has one winning move in the position, and it's getting the king out right away while you have the chance, of course. All right, after that, suppose um, black checks us. He better because we're threatening to promote. Well, then we can go over to the C file where our rook is, and he can't check us anymore. So the only thing he can do is go back to the A file to guard the promotion square and threaten the pawn. Well, that's okay, we have a, a tactic in the position. We take our rook and slide it far to the right, to the H file, let's say. And now black cannot take our pawn without losing the rook to this skewer. Okay, and if black doesn't take our pawn and he just waits or moves the king out, then we're gonna get to the eighth rank here and then we'll be able to promote our pawn, and we win. All right, and so the last thing I'll say in this video is you may be wondering um, how common is this Lucena position? Is this practical knowledge? Will it come up in your games? Well, a lot of king and uh, rook and pawn end games do boil down to the Lucena position if one side is trying to win. 
if you have more pawns than your opponent, maybe pawns get traded down and one pawn survives and you're trying to queen it. Well, if you can get your enemy's king, your opponent's king, away from that pawn, cut off by your rook from that pawn, then you should be able to achieve a Lucena position and win. If this king is in front of the pawn, though, if it's on the D file here somewhere, it's a different story entirely. But here, white should be able to get the, the pawn and the king up the board, start moving it up the board, and achieve a Lucena position with the pawn on D7 and the king on D8. And there's nothing black can really do to stop it. Let's see a sample line. So white moves the king up, and maybe black checks, king goes up again. Now maybe the rook goes to the A file, planning to check from the side. Well, we push the pawn while we can. The check comes from the side. King C5, check from the side. King C6, check from the side. And to get out of the checks, let's approach the rook. Well, this does give the rook the opportunity to blockade the pawn. But then we go back and gain a tempo by attacking the rook. Maybe the rook falls back to d8, and that allows us to push the pawn further. Um, maybe the rook goes back to the a file. If the rook stays in front of the pawn too long, then we won't even need to achieve a Lucena position. We'll be able to just queen the pawn. Okay, so the king has to go up here, and it goes to b6 to stop the checks from the side. Maybe rook b8 check, king c7, rook a8, d7. And if the rook goes somewhere, we'll achieve that Lucena position. And you might not even have to achieve the Lucena position to win. You might be able to promote your pawn without the techniques we discussed. But the point is, when that black king is cut off by at least one file here by your rook, and it's not in front of the pawn, then your king and pawn should be able to work their way up the board like that. So getting a Lucena position is actually quite common. Alright, thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something. I sure did.